So you saw the Daydreams of Pride trailer and were probably like, wow, I want to see this, but also I didn't understand some certain things and went, hey, what the heck? Daydreams of Pride is a sequel to a show I did from 2011 to 2018 known as Adventures in the Hills. This is based off of a book I wrote and am currently still rewriting named Reverie of Wrath. But the YouTube series is called Adventures in the Hills, so I'll be referring to it as that. And the differences between the book and the show merit a video of their own, so we're going to focus on the events of the show. I'll try and give you a quick as possible, in chronological, not shown in order, overview so you can be all caught up for Daydreams of Pride. Oh yeah, if you didn't get the memo already, spoilers for Adventures in the Hills. So right back after World War II, an alien race called the Quantum comes and picks up two human boys. One is named Equinox and one is named Zenova. They grow up as brothers until Equinox gets jealous of Zenova's powers. He's a wizard, by the way. So Equinox reaches out to Satan, using forbidden magic to try and make himself more powerful. Satan grants this wish, but on one condition. His body, when he dies, gets to be used for him. Equinox becomes the dictator of this quantum planet and has a war with the remaining troops fighting for freedom. And Zenova is also fighting with these troops. When losing, Zenova escapes to Earth and Equinox comes and brings some lackeys too. Zenova loses to Equinox in a fight, but had already created the Wish Orb, or the Easy Button, whatever, for the potential of Wish back friends, and sacrifices his memories to become younger through a spell. But spoiler alert, if you wish for someone back with the easy button slash wish orb, it kills somebody else. In this universe, World War 3 has already happened, but at that point it was really short-lived and happened in the 80s, causing tech to become more advanced more quickly. No nukes went off, but in 2011 we finally meet our protagonist Justin. Original, am I right? I mean, in the book his name is Jairus, but uh, Justin, we're going to be calling him that for now. He's a low-class scavenger who steals and it is a gang with Allison Jackson. There's an opposing gang that fights with them all the time, and Justin witnesses what they do with their victims and sees that a member of their gang is being tortured by their own leader. The two gangs get in a fight, but Justin and his originally enemy Donnie team up to defeat the other gang leader, Albert, who is being abusive. On part 2, Justin and Donnie find the easy button that Zenova had wished across the world, and Equinox comes to try and take it. The only catch is Zenova put a curse on him that made him weaker over time, so Justin and Donnie manage to defeat him and some of his alien lackeys, but not before he cursed a woman to bear his child, Jack, who because of Equinox's curse is a demon human, and was the main antagonist until Justin and Donnie found a way to beat him. In part 3, Justin and Donnie meet Kenny and Zack. Zack is someone they found randomly, and Kenny is actually Zenova with his lost memories. And Equinox's best admiral, Minister Destructo, is the main villain of the part. Having lackeys such as the Roman soldier and Bobinson. Bobinson will be important for later, despite Donnie hating Bobinson. And I, I don't mean the character Donnie, I mean real life Donnie. But Minister Destructo builds a beacon to try and suck the life out of the Earth and bring it back to the quantum planet with his knock off easy button the magical cube of death but justin and the gang stop him once more yeah part four starts with a blast from the future so a kid named alex comes from far in the future and tells of a creature named rodaro in that timeline who has screwed up the future and killed everyone alex is donnie's grandson and is here to help all in all they get through paranormal events caused by rodaro who is a being made by equinox's body by satan that's why satan wanted that and they beat Rodaro with the Emerald Sword, which Rodaro is weak to. Don't worry, the book doesn't have that deus ex machina. Part 5, the main villain is Amar, who is actually Justin from the future, the same timeline that Alex came from, but that's supposed to be a surprise. Amar possesses Justin's body occasionally, and teleports the main cast to a version of Earth made from the quantum planet, with only a few of the quantum race left, and some of Amar's warriors are... The Bone Monster, Jack who is back because he was revived, that was in Season 3 but it wasn't really important until now, Scar who's important, he's kinda like a bounty hunter, and other people too, I guess. Also Alex touches a stick, we'll get to why that's important later. Justin and Amar share blood so the fast healing power that Amar has transfers to Justin. They defeat Amar but then he teams up with a version of Rodaro that was possessing him that makes absolutely no sense. It isn't Rodaro in the book, it was just cool to have him back. It's the one they killed earlier? but then their souls were, it doesn't matter they both died then the timeline splits part six the timeline saga starts with the introduction of the adrenaline corporation which was originally owned by harlow henry 
who is James' grandfather in Daydreams of Pride. And the exosuit is there too, which is kind of just a plot device that makes them fight Ascari because they're better now. And Ascari is another physical demon, just like Rodaro, but this time made from Allison's body in the messed up timeline. In that timeline, what happened is Amar tried to kill Rodaro, but Rodaro had just created Ascari out of Allison's body, so the two of them teamed up on future Justin, aka Amar, and sent him into the past to be the villain of part 5. So there are two timelines in this part, one where Kenny is in a different exosuit company named Regiment Legion, and Zack, Donnie, Alex, and Justin are part of Adrenaline Corp, and the other with Amar in his group. Using the exosuits and Donnie's time power given to him accidentally by Ascari, how it works is Rodaro had a demon blood ability that made ghosts and zombies appear. Ascari has the ability to bend time slightly, like slowing it down, so Donnie ends up getting the same power. Long story short, even though their own adrenaline droid turns against them and Scar comes back and yada yada, Mars still alive, it has Bobinson and his gang, together they defeat Ascari and they all had to go into one timeline. Oh yeah and Justin tried to take him alone and he freaking died, but didn't really die. All protagonists must have a die but not die moment. Anyways, the seventh part is the Adrenaline Saga, where Donnie steps up to power in Adrenaline Corp and starts making chemical weaponry, but Zack and Amar instantly leave because they're like, that's a war crime! Donnie has basically gone rogue, and when Kenny comes with his leader Amber from Regiment Legion to pick up Zack, Donnie gets mad and they get into a fight. So spoiler alert, Ascari got planted into Donnie as a last ditch effort and is now using Adrenaline Corp to make something. There's a war between the two, where Donnie and Alex are on Adrenaline Corp, Amar is neutral, Bobinson and such are on Regiment Legion, Amar betrayed Regiment Legion, he secretly joined Adrenaline Corp, the Adrenaline Droid was back, Scar was there, the whole shebang. Eventually, Amar learns exactly of what Donnie has done from Regiment Legion, and joins Regiment Legion AGAIN, and then gets taken into custody by Adrenaline Corps. And then, the HOT war between them begins, where it's Donnie versus Kenny again and all the troops. But then Ascari comes back and they all team against him to beat him up in this situation, it kinda diffuses right after, they kinda just win and it becomes Adrenaline Legion. But Amar leaves because he was mad. Now, remember why I said the stake with Alex is important? Amar doesn't even know this, but he chose the exact right spot in the solar system because that's where Satan was able to plant himself, and he's slowly been possessing Alex, and now he has full control. He's going to pretend he's Alex, though, so the Cyber Saga, aka Part 8, starts off with the robot body that Donnie didn't even know he created in the last season, getting its consciousness, Rodaro. Rodaro from the future timeline that was successful in taking over and stuff, yeah, he comes back as Cyber Rodaro. He finds Amara in the wilderness and uses Donnie's other invention on him, a Cyber Core. This one is special, however, because they're used to give sentience to a robot, but this one is used to control a human. Cyber Rodaro recruits the Adrenaline Droid, Amar, who's now Cyber Core Amar, and Crimson to fight by his side. After taking the main character's memories the week prior, the memories are stored in orbs. Cyberdaro has quote unquote rid of them and told them that their memories basically make them useless now that they're gone. So Kenny, Donnie, Bobinson, and Zack are basically the only ones left. I mean, Alex is there too, and they go to try and fetch the past memories, but Alex is actually Satan. Which Cyberdaro knows and communicates with Satan. Crimson was also Zack's twin brother, and eventually fights on their side, and the Adrenaline Droid turns into the Fab Droid due to his new personality through Cybercore. After a while, Satan finds out that Rodaro wanted to save the humans by giving them all Cybercores like Amar had, and Satan tells him, no, he's stupid, and then Rodaro betrays Satan because, you know, Rodaro's only human, and it starts to show now. Satan shows him the memories of Equinox, how he was when he was a human, and now he wants to settle the score with the main cast. This is where Justin actually comes back in. His fast healing power saved him very slowly, and he literally comes out of the grave again, basically, meets Scar, and convince Scar to train with him, and they become super strong together. Justin comes back to beat up Cyberdar, who wanted personal revenge. Even though Justin is probably the most powerful, it isn't enough and they brought back Amar who got his cybercore broken by fighting Scar, used the broken cybercore as a bomb to defeat Rodaro for good. Who was really just Satan's puppet because the last part, part 9, aka the Nightmare Saga, is obvious. Satan comes, he knocks Donnie over in Alex's body, Satan's the god of evil so he's way too strong for all of them. 
that he gives them time to fight. They fight demons. They get the help of angels. Justin gets the power of shock amp from a dying angel, which is a power boost but can hurt him in the long run if he uses it too long. Satan takes Jack back as a lackey, just as you start to care about him again. Satan makes Scar evil again, Satan makes Zack kill his brother Crimson, and Justin has to end up killing Scar, it's not a good time. But in the end, Justin, Donnie, and Kenny are there to stand against Satan. After beating Jack again, Zack unfortunately died to Jack. But then, Satan kills Donnie and Kenny after Kenny tried to wish him away, figuring out that he was a Nova and making a new wish orb. Yeah, you just can't wish a god out of existence, didn't work. But then all their powers combine with Justin's shock amp, and Justin finally stands a chance to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Satan. And Justin almost beats him, but starts losing steam and then loses. Fortunately, Alex comes back and lowers all the defenses just so Justin can kill him and say goodbye, and uses the power he gained and sacrifices all of it in the wish orb slash easy button one last time to bring everyone that had just died back to life. Jack is even brought back and it scares them, but he's not Satan possessed anymore and jokes around with him. Also Alex is dead forever, because if you die in the wrong timeline you no longer exist. That is the same with Amar. Kenny tries to destroy the wish orb but doesn't know how to, so he ends up wishing it into a hiding spot. And then all is well, or so they thought. Daydreams of Pride takes place 64 years after the end of Adventures in the Hills, so we'll see what happens. And that is the story of Adventures in the Hills. Thank you for listening, and now that you're all caught up for Daydreams of Pride Part 1, Rumble Storm, where it all starts, be there on September 13th to see the legacy.